Hello everybody and welcome to this new episode of the OWASP Top 10 Training Series. Today, we're going to practice SQL injection. So let's start first by running our Debian VM, which we created earlier, connect to it using SSH. Let's verify that our Docker containers are working properly. We have both Juice Shop running on port 3000 and WebWolf and WebGoat. All right, let's connect to WebGoat and let's register a new user. So as you can see, the user interface is straightforward. You have all the OWASP top 10 vulnerabilities listed. We're going to start with injection and specifically with SQL injection. We're going to start with the ninth challenge of the SQL injection introduction. We have a select statement, select start from user data, where first name equals John and last name equals our parameter. And we have three drop downs, which would help us construct a valid SQL query that would allow us to retrieve all the user's data. So the first drop down, we can choose either Smith with quote at the end or just a quote. And then in the third drop down, we will choose the fourth option, which is one equals one with a quote. And at the end, we terminate the quote. So as you can see, the full query is highlighted here. And you can see that last name equals quote and then a closed quote and then or one equals one is a valid SQL query which allows us to retrieve all the user's data because one is always equals to one. Uh, I've already covered the basics of SQL injection and the theory behind it in our blog post on thehackerish.com so make sure to check that out. We are going to target an error-based SQL injection, which basically means that the response of the exception is getting back to us. So here the idea is to first figure out where the injection happens and second, exploit the injection so that we can list all the user's data. So what we can do is just inject a single quote to try to figure out if there is any error. And lo and behold, we have an error back. And you can see it says that the injection happens in the user ID where we have our quote injected. The login count is not vulnerable because it's using parameterized queries, which we covered in the blog post. I have it linked in the description box below. So now what we can do is just give it an expected value in the login count if, as an integer. We can inject an always true statement and retrieve all the user records. So we've been able to construct a valid SQL query while uh, extracting all the user details. These details contain personal information, credit card information, etc. In challenge 11, we're going to see how SQL injection impacts confidentiality. The idea in this challenge is to retrieve all the employee information, not just the Smith's user information. So we start by fetching the Smith's data and we have its record from the database. But let's see in the SQL query, you can notice that we have a concatenation with the name and the auth10 parameters. So if we inject Smith quote or one equals one, which will always evaluate to true, we're going to get all of the user's data. Notice that we have the salary in the table of the, in the employees table. So what we can do is go to challenge 12 where we can demonstrate how SQL injection can affect integrity. And in this case, we're going to change the Smith's salary. So like we did before, we try to fetch the Smith salary, but we want it to be the higher salary. So what we can do is use the SQL update statement to change the employee table and specifically change the salary column 
to a really high number where our user ID is the, the Smith user ID. And now you can see that the salary of Smith has been increased. But SQL injection can also target availability. In challenge 13, we have to remove our malicious activity. If we type salary and then search logs, we can clearly see that our malicious activity has been logged. So we're going to truncate the table in the system so it won't break any functionality while at the same time removing our traces. But it seems that WebGoat expects us to drop the table instead of just truncating it. So we can use the drop table to remove the whole table altogether. Now, if we try to search for salary inside the logs, we can indeed see that we have no results. If we try SQL injection on the OWASP juice store, we can target the login feature and same, we just inject our single quote to uh, see if there is any error back in the response. This is a, clearly a SQLite uh, injection. And you can see the SQL query that's being performed. So now what we can do is try to bypass the authentication altogether using a always true statement. And we were able to log in as a user admin because that's the first record in the users table, apparently. Now let's do some advanced SQL exploitation. We're going to target challenge five and let's try to mess up with the register feature. Now notice if we just enter an already existing user, which in this case, the user Tom, by the way, this is the user that we're, we're going to exploit we get a uh, typical error, user Tom already exists. But let's change the payload and notice when we change it to a statement that returns a true value, like and one equal one. Let's comment to just have our SQL valid. We can see that we have somewhat the same message, user already exists. Whereas if we inject a false statement like n1 equals 3, we can clearly see that the user has been created. This suggests that somehow we have a user verification that gets evaluated and if the user exists, we have the message user already exists and if not, we create the user. Let's validate that by looking inside the source code. So first we're going to capture the request. You can see that there is a put request to uh, slash webgoat slash SQL injection advanced slash challenge. So let's see if we can find that exact Java code. Let's go to GitHub and paste in the endpoint. Yep, this is the put mapping that we're going after. So let's go inside and see what's behind that feature. And as you can see, this is our endpoint, which is a put request. And there you have it, a select user ID from users table based on the username reg parameter. So let's exploit this using SQL map. So we're going to capture the request and then pass it to SQL map. This is very convenient in the testings because we don't need to worry about any cookies or something like that. We just pass the request to SQL map and SQL map tries to do the work for you. Now let's copy the request into a file. We'll name it request. We're going to also copy the response message that we got from our request and use it in the string option of SQL map to tell it when to understand that the injection evaluates to true. And right away we find that this is indeed a vulnerable parameter. So SQL map is trying to test different techniques. 
and indeed it is sure now that the user reg parameter is vulnerable and the vulnerability is a SQL uh, is a boolean based blind SQL injection and um, there's also a stacked query possibility for injection and also a time based blind injection so we're going to choose the technique, uh, the blind technique. We already know how to differentiate between a true and a false statement. And let's fetch the current DB. All right, so we know that the DB is public. So let's now try to fetch the tables using the tables option. And we're going to increase the threads to 10 threads and the level and the risk so that we can find the names of the tables. It seems that the challenge users table is the one we should go after. So let's give it a try and see what columns inside that table are. We're going to remove the tables option and then add a dash T to select the challenge users table and then add the option columns. SQL map provides us with the possibility to brute force the column names based on a built-in dictionary, which is very convenient. We already have user ID, email and password. So with this information, we can just uh, target the two columns, email and password and run SQL map with the dump option to get the data from the tables. And we have 17 passwords. And you can see that it's starting to retrieve the passwords, but it looks gibberish. And the solution is just to remove the threads. So as you can see, we are slowly dumping all the records, all the emails and passwords from the challenge users table using the SQL injection. But instead of having an error based one, it's a blind Boolean based SQL injection and used SQL map to automate the process. So it seems like Tom's password is this is a secret for Tom only. So let's copy that and verify that it's the right password. Congratulations. In challenge three, we're going to see how we can use the union statement to retrieve data from another table. And the objective is to retrieve Dave's password from user system data table. So we're going to start by injecting a single quote and see the error message, which contains the full SQL query. Since the vulnerable query queries data from the user data table and the user data table contains seven columns, we have to inject seven nulls inside our request in order for the SQL query to be valid. We can see that we have the response back, which contains our seven nulls that we injected. Now, instead of injecting just nulls, we're going to target the user name and password columns from the other table, and we're going to inject them in the second and third places and hit OK. So you can see that the first name contains the list of first names from the second table and the last name which is the third position contains the last name of the second table. And that way we were able to retrieve Dave's password. So that's it. I hope you really enjoyed practicing SQL injection in this video. If you enjoyed it, like the video and leave a comment for any suggestions or comments or questions. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel.